Also, we are learning now just moments ago that this, the Mueller letter has, in fact, been delivered to Capitol Hill. Jerry Nadler's office, the House Judiciary Chairman, says that he has received it. And you heard Nadler uh, just moments ago raise questions about uh, Barr's credibility. Of course, there's also a 10 a.m. deadline where they are expecting on the House side, they, their subpoena says the full Mueller report should be turned over to Capitol Hill, unredacted. We don't expect the Justice Department to meet that deadline. So a lot of fireworks on the House and Senate sides of the Capitol that are going to happen in just a matter of minutes. Well, All right, stand by, uh, Manu. Laura Jarrett, uh, our justice uh, correspondent, uh, is with us. You have the letter. This is the sensitive letter uh, that the uh, special counsel, Robert Mueller, wrote to Bill Barr a few days after Bill Barr's principal conclusions were re released. Go ahead and read the letter. And it's a short letter, so I'm going to read it in full for the benefit <laughs> of everybody. It's only a little over a page. And here's what they say, Wolf. I previously sent you, it's addressed to Bill Barr, I previously sent you a letter dated March 25th, 2019, that enclosed the introduction and executive summary for each volume of the special counsel's report marked with redactions to remove any information that potentially could be protected by Federal Rule of Criminal Procedure, Procedure 60. That's on grand jury materials. That concerned uh, declination decisions or that related to a, a charge case. We had also marked an additional two sentences for review and have now confirmed that these sentences can be released publicly. Accordingly, the enclosed documents are in a form that can be released to the public, consistent with legal requirements and department policies. I am requesting that you provide these materials to Congress and authorize their public release at this time. As we stated in our meeting of March 5th and reiterated to the department early in the afternoon of March 24th, the introductions and executive summaries of our two-volume report accurately summarize this office's work and conclusions. The summary letter the department sent to Congress and released to the public late in the afternoon of March 24th did not fully capture the context, nature, and substance of this office's work and conclusions. We communicated that concern to the department on the morning of March 25th. There is now public confusion about critical aspects of the results of our investigation. This threatens to undermine a central purpose for which the department appointed the special counsel to ensure to assure full public confidence in the outcome of the investigation. See the department press release. While we understand that the department is reviewing the full report to determine what is appropriate for public release, a process that our office is working with you to complete, that process need not delay the release of the enclosed materials, again, the redacted materials. Release at this time would alleviate misunderstandings that have arisen and would answer congressional and public questions about the nature and outcome of our investigation. It would also accord with the standard for public release of notifications to Congress cited in your letter. And then he cites the provision of the federal code there. So clearly, and he, and he signs it, right? And he signs it, Robert S. Mueller the <laughs> third. Yeah. So I think clearly what you see here are, is two main thrusts. He wanted those public summaries out. Now it's interesting he didn't attach them to his original submission when he provided the full report to the Justice Department, but he did it a few days later, and he's adamant if you release those, they'll have more of the context because as we remember from those summaries, it laid out chapter and verse everything that we then see in the 448 pages to come. It lays out his theory on why he didn't think a sitting president could be indicted. It lays out the 11 different instances of potential obstructive conduct. And so he clearly thought, if you put those out, the public will have a yeah. better understanding of my work. Because right now, with your four-page letter, the public is not understanding because what, he makes it clear. It. He makes it clear in this letter that he feels that uh, Barr distorted the yes. bottom line conclusions. He also makes it clear... You know what? You had summaries that we had provided that were already redacted. Everything was ready to go. Why not release those? Uh, and uh, Mark Mazzetti, I know you want to weigh in on this as well. And it's clear now from this letter that there's more than one letter, mm -hmm. that there was yeah. a communication mm -hmm. March 25th, which is the day after Barr's letter comes out. Right. So this 27th letter is actually a follow-up. Yeah. And it also is quite extraordinary in this letter that you see that there was back and forth over that weekend between Mueller's office and Barr's office um, about what to put in. And 
Barr, if, if I remember correctly, kind of characterized this was we looked at it, um, we made our own judgments, uh, sort of in a vacuum outside of input from Mueller. But clearly, uh, this shows that there was uh, they Mueller team over that weekend wanted to get more into that original. Right. And hold on, hold on, on for a minute onus on Barr. Yeah. It does not say it was media confusion. It says that Barr right. mis misled on the findings of the report. So that it belies the Lindsey Graham claims that this was about the press coverage. He says Barr misinterpreted it. And very you know, clear. Barr did not want to put out something piecemeal, right? He was like, okay, we're going to wait. We're going to give you this whole thing all at once, and we're going to do the redactions, and Mueller is working with me. Well, as we all presume beforehand, Mueller wasn't born yesterday. <laughs> and when he wrote his report and he had these summaries, we knew, we knew that they were probably ready to go and had been scrubbed in advance. And that was, in fact, the case. And what Mueller is saying in this letter is, you're not only undermining us, but you're undermining the special counsel. And that's a larger problem. All right. Uh, Je Jeffrey Tubin, and uh, I'm anxious to get your thoughts. Well, you know, I, if I can translate some legalese in, in the letter that Laura just read, that is a scathing, outraged right. letter yeah. accusing the, pre the attorney general of completely distorting and lying to the public about what Mueller spent two years on. I mean, that is not a polite letter among old friends. That is an accusation of political interference in Mueller's work. That is not a routine letter in any sense of the word. And, and I, I just think, you know, we, we'll have the opportunity to read it. And, but, but let's be clear about what Mueller is saying, is that the fix was in. And he is saying that Barr deliberately distorted his, his um, conclusions for the political gain of the president. That's what that letter says in plain English. And it's very significant, uh, you know, Susan Hennessy, because uh, the four-page summary by Barr re was released on March 24th. In this letter, we now have confirmed, uh, he says this, Mueller, we communicated that concern to the department on the morning of March 25th. So even before he drafted this letter a few days later, he already called them and said, you know what, we got a problem uh, and, uh, and, 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 and it's a significant one. Right. So I, I do think that this letter shows Barr's conduct in the intervening period between uh, the initial summary to the actual release of the report is fundamentally indefensible. There's going to need to be a serious conversation about whether or not he has the credibility to lead the department moving forward. Gloria mentioned that Barr has said he didn't want to release things piecemeal, but he did release things of piecemeal. Course, yeah. mm -hmm. He just <laughs> didn't. And instead of releasing a, a version that had been cleared, that was the special counsel speaking in his own voice, he, he uh, offered sort of his own uh, a quite distorted take. And it's important to keep in mind the reason we have special counsel investigations at all, and that's to have public confidence and integrity in these kinds of findings to understand that they are free from political interference. What Bill Barr has done, what Robert Mueller is fairly clearly accusing him of having done, is, uh, is essentially Undermine. undermining the yep. central purpose of mm -hmm. having a special counsel. One of the mo this is the most critical example example, an investigation of the president into the circumstances of his election, potential crimes committed while in office, uh, that really is just indefensible. You know, Laura, uh, uh, Barr has got some explaining to do right now. Uh, oh, like I got, I love Lucy, he does. <laughs> yes, he has explaining to do. I may actually start calling him Attorney General Lucy after this because I have to say he's fast and loose with the truth, and now he has a lot of explaining he has to do, precisely because, number one, this reminds me of a contemporaneous memo that was drafted by James <laughs> Comey and everyone who's had interactions with Donald Trump throughout the early parts of the administration trying to codify what conversation they have. They do so because there's a fundamental lack of, of trust. Here we have a former congenial relationship or collegial relationship with two friends. Now I've got to write down the conversations we have to remind you that I essentially am not this inept person. Number two, you, you really have this, uh, this overwhelming idea here that I feel as though the attorney general, according to Mueller, must misconstrue that phrase of, you serve at the pleasure of the president. 
it seems as though Mueller was trying to be very clear that you do not serve the president, nor do you serve to please the president. This report, the facts stated were as they were, they should have been released, and I have repeatedly asked you to do so. And more than three weeks later went by before you had um, Barr give a test, give a hearing, in, or a, a conference in front of everyone, and then wait an additional 90 minutes before providing well, it. Mm -hmm. We know that Barr has been completely dismissive of Mueller's legal theory of obstruction. And he made that very clear in his four-page yeah. letter. He said, well, I consider them, I, you know, I, I disagree with them. So I'm wondering how much of a surprise it actually came to Barr as that, I mean, to mm -hmm. Mueller, that Barr, that Barr did it this way. I, I mean, one thing to keep in mind how easy it would have been for Barr to have done the right thing here, well, to release the report, to release the executive summaries, to offer his own opinion. He separately. could have also given his read on whether or not he thought this was obstruction, exactly. but to give that minimal level of transparency to preserve his own credibility and integrity, it really is baffling why someone uh, with I his want record Ellie to would weigh in, but just it. to...